HFA3 came out a few years ago, and the obvious difference is that it had a faster processor and it had greater storage. What that allowed is certain programs and software to be run on that that couldn't be run previously. When we first started using CETA testing, sort of the general consensus was CETA standard was the test to use. It was more accurate, it was more reliable, it was more consistent from test to test. And while faster was faster, we, we were all sort of leaning towards CETA standard. One of the problems was with the old GPA, you couldn't mix and match tests. So if you started a patient on CETA standard, you really had to keep them at a CETA standard. And even as you know they were getting older and maybe it was becoming harder for them to do the test, you still couldn't make that switch. Now with the GPA on the HFA3, you can mix C to standard, C to fast, and even C to faster. And so you have a patient who maybe uh, you started on C to standard and you're reluctant to change strategies. You don't have to have that worry anymore. C to faster recently was released. It had better starting points. It wouldn't have a default of extra time added if a person didn't respond. It didn't do double a bracketing to double check points. And it was about 30% faster than C to fast. It picked up a lot of time. And it appears that in terms of the metrics, in terms of number of points flagged, the mean deviation, they were similar. C to faster is one of the new pieces of the Zeiss diagnostic puzzle on visual fields. As we all know, one of the problems with visual fields is that it's difficult for patients to maintain their attention, uh, particularly older patients. They have a difficult time in sitting behind a field machine for five, six, seven, eight minutes. CETA Faster has been shown to be approximately a third faster than CETA Fast and 50% faster than CETA Standard, which has been the field algorithm that we've been using for the last 20 or so years. So just by virtue of its speed, C to faster will add to our ability to perform visual fields and likely give us uh, better results on the field tests. So when HFA3 first came out, really the, the changes that I saw compared to the previous units were mostly in kind of workflow. So it was easier for technicians. There was the liquid lens, which reduced errors for the trial lens. There were the instructions that the technician could see right on the screen. So you're getting more uniform um, administration of the test, which is always really good. But now with the HFA3, we have CETA faster, and you know nobody likes to do visual fields. The technicians don't like to be in a dark room with a patient. The patient doesn't like to do a visual field. And so anything that we can do to make it faster for the patient, easier for the patient, we feel like we're gonna get better data. So now you can take a 24-2, and in a normal patient, do it in a minute and a half. In a patient with glaucoma, you're gonna cut your time down about 50% from CETA standard. That's just gonna make for a good day for everybody. So patients are gonna be happier, Doctors are gonna be happier. We don't lose any um, reliability or any um, accuracy by going to the CETA faster. We're gonna have the ability through a new diagnostic, the 24-2C, which is a visual field test that has added 10 more points in the central 10 degrees. So therefore, using 24-2C, we will not have to do separate 24-2s and separate 10-2s, but we can get the same information from one test. Obviously, if we're testing 10 more points, if we run the same C to standard, the test is going to take longer. So my anticipation is going to be that when we run 24-2C along with C to faster, we'll be running a visual field test that will give us much more information in approximately the same time. And that's gonna be incredibly important to us as we look at, again, number one, getting better visual field tests because they're faster, and or two, gathering information about the central 10 degrees of the visual field. A host of individuals, including Don Hood, have proposed that glaucoma damage occurs early in the macular region. We've been doing macular imaging testing for a while, and we can start to see if damage is occurring in that macular region. Now it's going a step further, and people have proposed doing the 10-2 test, which takes 68 points and put them in that central 10 degrees, when previously we weren't testing that area except for a few points on the 24-2. So the, the idea of the 24-2C is that it takes all the points on the 24-2 and it adds 10 points from the 10-2. 
So now you have 64 points, but the idea of those 10 points that right in that center 10 degrees are the ones that are thought to be the ones most commonly flagged if glaucoma develops. The idea is you have one test to run instead of two. Right now the test runs, the 24-2C runs with CETA faster. The idea is that with the CETA faster, it takes as long as if you're running a 24-2 with CETA fast. So for years we've looked just at nerve fiber layer and then 24-2 visual fields. And in the last five years or so with Don Hood's work looking at the importance of the macula in glaucoma, it's really come to light that there are some glaucoma patients who their earliest visual field defects are in the central 10 degrees. And with a 24-2 sampling uh, size, we just don't really dig down into that central 10 degrees. So what we sort of started doing was doing a 24-2 and a 10-2, which slows things down and makes it miserable for the patient. So with the 24-2C, they've incorporated five central points superiorly and five central points inferiorly. So we sort of get the best of both worlds. We don't have to do two visual field tests, but we can get the 24-2, so we're not missing any of the peripheral visual field loss, but we get some of those high, um, high importance points in the central 10 degrees.